Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to go to a brewery that I only encountered for the first time very very recently and this will be my first dedicated review to them. So we're going to go to Urlebro which is a little bit out to the west of Stockholm, about an hour and a half maybe two or so to the west of Stockholm if I remember correctly and we're going to try my first or do my first dedicated review I should say to Nerke Kultebreggeri. So this one was actually a recommendation from Andreas Carlson, who has fo followed the channel for quite a wee while. He was telling me this is one of his favourite, um, one of his favourite beers. He really likes this one. So we're going to have a taste of the Urebro Bitter, which comes in at 5.9%. As the name suggests, this one is an English style bitter, ESB bitter, uh, you know, however you actually want to term this style. And um, he, this is a very, very highly rated one, actually. According to Rate Beer, this is one of the top 50 ESBs in the world. It's got a 99 rating within the style and it also has an 86 overall. What I will say about this style is that it's not one of my favourite beer styles, but if it's done well, it can be um, really, really quite nice. And it's quite, it's not very common actually that you see craft breweries brewing this, uh, these beer styles. The only other bitter that I can think of in Sweden is the Urub, is the um, the Bidero bitter, sorry, from Nunes Hems Ombre, which is also from the kind of Stockholm-ish area of Sweden. They're a little bit to the south of the city, if I remember correctly. But yeah, really curious to try this one. It's a, as I say, it's a style that um, I'm not too familiar with. I think I've only reviewed a couple of these on the channel over the years, but really looking forward to this one. It's cool to review beers that are your recommendations as well, so I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one. And it's cool to do my first review from Nerka Kultebrigger. Unfortunately, I missed out on the, the Kagan Stormax Porter because I went on at 10 a.m. and it was gone already. You know, there was no way I was getting that by all accounts, so I was a bit gutted about that. But the other beer I reviewed from these guys was the um, the Turbo Kag and Stormax Porter, the collaboration. It's basically a blend beer, that, from uh, Opie Gourds and, uh, and these guys who were both celebrating their 15th anniversary. That was very, very cool, actually, and one of the best Swedish beers I've reviewed in a little while. But, um, yeah, let's get on with the, the review then. So, as always with my videos then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the Future from the Akakulta Brewery. Very first time I'm doing a dedicated review to these guys, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about the Nerka Kulta Bruggery then so as I told you earlier Nerka Kulta Bruggery are based in Urebro out to the west of Stockholm and the company was founded back in 2003 so they are one of the more established and one of the longer standing craft breweries that you would have actually but the company was founded by Hoge Viktorsson and also Berit Carson so Hoge if um, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, actually had a career as a photographer and an artist before he became a brewer. And Berit is the CEO of the company, but also the chair of the Swedish Independent Brewers Association, the Sverige Oberoende Mikrobrigeria. But for a long time, this brewery was only producing keg beer, but recently they've began to produce the bottles as well. And this has helped them grow substantially. And they did this after they bought the old brew kit from the Nunes Hem Ongbrewery, who I mentioned earlier, the brewery that do the other bitter, the Bideru bitter, which is one that you definitely want to check out. But this brewery currently produces around 100,000 litres of beer per year and they're particularly famous for the Kagan Stormax Porter, as I mentioned to you, which was rated as one of the world's best beers for a long time on rate beer. But this beer was first produced in 2004 as Stormax Porter, but the... Um, Later, it was aged in bourbon barrels and then became known as the Kagan Stormax Porter as well, which, as I say, that is the one that is very, very famous. And I'm very sad that I missed out on that recently. There was only 400 bottles for the whole of Sweden and, you know, it just went like that, basically. There was no chance I was going to be able to get a bottle of that. I would have loved to have reviewed that for you on the channel. But, um, but yeah, um, really interesting brewery, this one. Apparently, they went through a little bit of um, a rough period. I think Hoagie's, I'm sure it was Hoagie's son or something had died and, um, you know, 
they really struggled to kind of keep the, the company afloat. There was various issues, uh, obviously personally and uh, financially that came with that as well. They were, there was a period of time where they were really struggling to actually get their beers out there. But thankfully they survived and they are regarded as a very, very interesting brewery. I mean, from what I had a look at on their website, most of their beers tend to be the old kind of English ale style actually. And um, they, they're pretty highly rated. So in terms of an English style brewery, I guess these guys are probably one of the ones that you really want to check out if you're watching from Sweden and that's the kind of beer that you like. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook. They do have an Instagram as well, and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. But um, but yeah, so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one. Most of the beers that you'll get from there, Kakulta Bravery, are very, very similar to this. And um, They've got this sort of black label, and of course at the top here, this is the kind of Nerka uh, symbol and they've got a plain bottle cap on them of course just like that and this is a half litre bottle I got a nice surprise when I picked this one up at the uh, the City Stemble Lager I had to order this one of course um, and one of the things that's really funny about these beers is it always says uh, Inked Blask so basically this means that it's not shite it's not piss basically um, from what um, my friend was telling me so I thought that was quite um, funny they also say on here basically you are what you drink and I think that's a very very good um, mod uh, model so yeah but um, yeah it should be a really interesting one this so without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting like I said this one is a 5.9% ESB style beer and it came recommended by Andreas Carlson who has followed the channel I think for quite a little while so yeah let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Ooh, look at that. This is actually quite dark for uh, for a bitter beer, if I remember correctly. This one's poured. If I hold it up to the light, it's actually a very nice kind of dark mahogany colour, that beer. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say very slightly beige, maybe fawn actually is a good colour to describe this one as, but a nice sort of fawn, beigey kind of coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. I don't know how well you're going to see it on the camera, but this beer is actually pretty clear. It's not really got much of a haze to it. Not sure how well that will show up on the camera, but lovely kind of clear beer. This one a dark. It's got a little bit of a ruby edge to it, but I think the best descriptor for the colour of this one is a nice kind of dark um, mahogany sort of thing. I can't remember what colour an English bitter should be. I think they can be a range of different colours but of course the, the English bitter style is one that's a little bit more of a real ale rather than a craft beer and of course the first craft beer that was produced in Sweden if I'm remembering correctly was that Badero bitter so the very first craft beer that the Swedes would have come across was um, was an English style bitter beer so yeah quite interesting but yeah lovely looking beer this one so let's take a closer look at the aroma and see how we go and as I said this beer is hopped with East Kent Goldings from England and Cascade which of course which is the kind of classic um, American hop. So yeah, with this beer, it's kind of interesting. It's got a little bit of a, you can definitely smell there's some sort of grainy bread forming the, the kind of linchpin of this beer. Yeah, sort of a kind of almost brown wholemeal bread sort of thing that's forming the base of this beer. On top of that, there's a little bit of a, a brown, there is a bit of brown sugar in there. You can taste, there's a, or you can smell that there's a little bit of a toasted, very slight kind of caramelly note to this beer. And definitely some biscuit too. So it's a really interesting thing. Brown bread. Yeah, definitely brown, brown bread. A little bit of kind of caramelly note in there. As I say, a little touch toasted as well, but... At the same time, it's a little bit. It has got a little bit of that sweetness, but it's almost a little bit of a syrupy kind of caramel that's coming out of this one. Some sweeter, sort of almost McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of notes out of the beer, and yeah. But with this one, you definitely get a bit of that distinctive English hop earthiness to it. These the, the, the things like the um, the East Kent Goldings, the the Fugles, um, try to think what other ones there are. There are a few other English hops, but they've always got this distinctive earthiness and also a little bit of a herbal quality as well so a little touch of earthiness in there some um, sort of herbal floral notes but also a little bit of lighter grassiness too and there is a little touch of red fruit coming out of this beer for me so for me this one it almost has a little bit of a um, it's got a little bit of a kind of sultanae kind of note to it this one I would say and there's a little bit of a figgy or datey kind of thing coming out of it as well it's almost a little touch 
It's almost got a little bit of a cakey vibe to it as well, which is very interesting. But yeah, to me, it actually reminds me a little bit of some of the German Dunkels. And this is one of the things for me as well, that the English beers, the English really if you like, they always drink them warm, and I've never understood that desire for warm beer. It's just something that I've never ever taken to. But then again, I really got into beer with the German beers, and those are always chilled, you know, they're supposed to be refreshing and chilled. I never got the idea of warm beer. In England, you know, I always preferred the German beers and the Czech beers were the same, of course. Belgian beers are always refrigerated as well. I think England's just a little bit unique in that way, that they like warm beer. But yeah, for me, lovely smelling beer, this one. It, as I say, this is a style that I'm not too familiar with and I'm not too fond of, to be honest with you, but if it's done well, you can appreciate it. I really did like the Badera Bitter, so very curious to see how this one turns out. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and just... Um, enjoy the aroma of the beer. It's always half the experience, but we're going to have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Örebro Bitter from the Nerka Kulta Bregory in Örebro, out to the west of Stockholm here in Sweden. 5.9% um, ESB style beer. Let's get stuck in. Slangia, Skull. Yeah. Now I will say, I can see why this beer is highly rated. It is a nice, it is a nice, solid beer. This one. So if you like this style, definitely have a go at it. And I'm sure I said the same about the Badera Bitter when I tried that. Um, it must be it's over a year ago that I reviewed that beer actually. Um, I'm sure I said the same about this beer. The English Bitter has a lot of potential if you use some of the American hops with it. Um, I was never when it came to Eng the English traditional beers. I always prefer the darker ones, you know, the stouts, the porters, some of the milds could be quite nice as well, and some of the brown ales were really good, but I was never a fan of bitters or golden ales, I just I wasn't a great fan of the lighter ones. The Badera Bitter, from what I remember, is quite a bit lighter than this beer, and I quite enjoyed that. This one is considerably darker, it's one of the more dark bitters that I've come across actually, and I think it's one of the kind of ambiguities with this style, is there's a range of different colours and sort of malt bases and things you can use for them. And for me, this is definitely one of the darker bitters that I've tried. But I can see why. Andreas has recommended to me. This one is a solid beer. There's no doubt in my mind about that. The other bonus, of course, is that you get a half litre of it. But yeah, I like how this one's kind of coming across. So as I always say, you should go the beer around your palate a little bit. Let your whole mouth adjust to it before you, you kind of break it down. But let's have a look at this now. So for me, the flavour in this one's actually kind of similar to what you were picking up in the aroma. There's that nice brown bready quality. That just blankets the middle of your palate there. And I'm finding this beer sweetens up a little bit the further into the aftertaste you go. And there's also a little bit of that grainy quality just kind of uh, lingering there. But nice brown bready notes. A little bit of graininess, some sweeter caramel in the middle of your palate. As you go out from that centre of your palate, the sweet caramel just sits there right in the middle of the tongue. But as you go further out from that, you can feel there is a little bit of a biscuity sweetness. And I'm not sure how familiar Swedes will be with this descriptor, um, but it really reminds me of these McVitie's digestive biscuits. It, that, that sort of vibe that this beer has really reminds me of that. And in the middle of the palate, the sort of brown sugary caramel note to this one is quite interesting as well. Yeah, the brown sugary notes in this one, it's a combination between um, being a quite syrupy, dark brown sugar, but at the same time it has got a little bit of sweetness. The centre of your palate really sweetens up a little bit the further into the, the aftertaste you go. And the way the brown sugar has come out of this one, it, in some ways it does actually remind me a little bit of the either the, the German Dunkel or the Doppelbox, it's got that really syrupy, well-fired kind of thing to it. The other sort of good way to describe the, the flavour of the malt base in this beer would be like if you've got a, a bread roll with a sort of well-fired crust on it, it's really, this beer has definitely a little bit of that really well-fired bread sort of um, character to it. I would definitely say that about this beer. But yeah, I like how everything is um, is going together in this one. It really just has a very nice um, kind of vibe about it. This beer is, in terms of an English bitter, 
it is really nice and it's it's interesting because as I say this style has a lot of potential if it's done well and both this one and the Badera bitter are very very solid so maybe I need to have a look at some of the better rated bitters on rate beer or something like this and just sort of form a bit of a, a kind of I basically form a more knowledgeable opinion of this style because as I say it's one that I didn't enjoy that much so I never bothered reviewing too many of them but I think that's something I will need to fix especially now that we're about 1500 reviews into this whole thing but yeah the malt base in this beer is really nice and for me the focus of the bitter is, uh, is more in the malt base and the hoppy side of things back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there as you come further forward it smooths out a little bit there is a little bit of herbal quality which as I say is from the, the Goldings hop in this one the East Kent Goldings and then as you reach the front corners of the palate a little bit of floral quality and round the very front curve of the tongue you've just got a little bit of a lighter sort of um, grassy note to this beer which is good and then behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me, this one, there's a little touch of, um, there is a little tiny bit of the grapefruit which is one of the signature things of the Cascade, but because of the darkness and the malt base in this one, it changes the esters that you get out of this beer. And for me, this one, it has a little bit of a raisiny sharpness to it in the beginning, but then it just smooths out. It becomes a little bit more figgy. It's a little bit more juicy, if that makes sense. And then right on the front tip of the tongue, it's got a little bit of a more, it's got a little bit of a um, kind of candied red fruity ester. It reminds me of the little heart-shaped sweets you get in the Harry Bo Star Mix. Again, it's quite a common descriptor, but it has that sort of candied strawberry note the further into the, the taste that you go. But there is a little bit of a citrusy note from the um, from the, the grassy qualities in this beer as well. It's got a little bit of raisin, it's got a little bit of sultana, maybe even a little touch of like apricot or, or something like that, a little bit of a dried apricot -y note to this one. But overall, it's a really, um, really nice beer, this one, and I like how everything um, goes together in it. It's, it's really just a very, very well done bitter, this. And as I say, a style that I don't particularly enjoy that much, but if it's done well, you know, you can really appreciate it. So big thumbs up to Neapikulta Brewery for this one. This brewery mainly focuses on English style beers but they've got a few German ones in there as well that I'd love to try. It'd be cool to try. I think they've got, I don't know if they've got a Hellas but I know they've got a Doppelbock so I'd love to try um, the Doppelbock and if they've got a Dunkel as well that would be the other one that I'd love to try but yeah really nice how this, this beer goes together so thank you to Andreas once again for the uh, for the recommendation with this one but it does have element, I, with this beer I can detect little elements of the uh, some of the German things in there which is quite interesting. A little bit of the brown sugar notes really remind me of the Dunkels and the Doppelbox from Germany but yeah lovely lovely beer this one so so glad that I was able to review it for you. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this beer is, I think it's fair to say it's mid-bodied. Carbonation is very, very smooth. The mouthfeel overall, I think, is... Um, it's got a bit of oily character to it. At the same time, it does have a little bit of wetness. It's not quite as thick as you're going to get from some of the English brewed bitters, of course. But that's because it's a bottle conditioned beer too, rather than one of these kind of cask things. And I think, to be honest, I don't, as I say, I've never had, a, I've never really enjoyed those warm, carb, uh, carbonless beers that you get in England. Uh, I've never really enjoyed that way of conditioning beer. Um, but nice little bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. At most, I'd say it's, it's somewhere between 30 IBUs and maybe 40. There is a little bit touch of bitterness from the malt base in this one. That roasted bread crust, you know, that I was talking about. But the malt base is well balanced between um, a little bit of the roasty side of things, but it also has a good little bit of sweetness there. A little bit of hop bitterness, but also some um, juicy fruits too. But overall, a really nice beer, and I can see why Andreas wanted me to try this one. I'm a bit disappointed I didn't know about this beer earlier, to be honest but what can you do there's so many beers these days but yeah let's leave it at that for this one just a very very solid beer and a style that I'm not overly familiar with but I am impressed with this one so a big thumbs up to Nelka Kulta Brewery for this and hopefully I can review some more of their beers in the near future but yeah the Urubro Bitter from Nelka Kulta Brewery in uh, Urubro 
in Sweden. So yeah. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Nerka Kulta Brewery as well. I'm sure I'll return to these guys in the near future. Um, and yeah, make sure you check out my social media. But a really interesting beer. This one, a style I'm not so familiar with, but I definitely recommend that you have a go at this one and see what you think because it is very, very solid. But until the next time, slander just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.